thank you, everyone, and it's a real honour for me. It's a great honour to follow uh, my friend and colleague uh, Ravi uh, there, who I first represented on the board of the organisation I now run. Um, it's a, a, a tremendous honour for me to be uh, elected to, as a fellow of the Academy. I thank uh, Peter Laver for his nomination and his persistence, uh, I understand. Um, it's a great honour to be speaking in the room. The uh, coalition celebrated their, their election win and this is actually the podium uh, the Prime Minister used in his speech at the election. You'll notice the, uh, the um, nail marks here as he dug dug his hands in. Uh, there I've been concentrating on that little bit of, uh, uh, of danger from the uh, grit as the innovation election fell a bit flat and uh, innovation's back on the uh, banned word list in Canberra uh, this year. So my career is around trying to uh, promote innovation and to uh, uh, help other people to succeed. As Linda said, I get a kick out of seeing other people uh, succeed in uh, their innovation. Perhaps that's because I wasn't very good at it myself. Uh, my career is in three phases. I, I worked for the pork industry uh, through my PhD and uh, at, here in, in Sydney at Sydney University, uh, then in Canada and then uh, running the pig R&D corporation in Canberra. So I've run uh, CRCs and small organisations uh, for 20 something years now uh, in, in Canberra. The best thing we ever did in the pork industry uh, during my time, I actually got in trouble for doing. Um, and that graph that you see, that big rise uh, there in exports to Singapore of pork, I wasn't allowed to have a pork export program, uh, even as Chief Executive of the uh, of the Pig R&D Corporation at the time. And at the Pork Council meeting in 1998, I got in trouble for spending $65,000 on uh, developing the, uh, the cold chain to Singapore. Um, and so it's interesting, that was a very industry-led group, uh, naturally, and they got quite angry that I'd spent $65,000 Nipah virus then came into Malaysia and uh, we launched chilled pork in Singapore uh, eight days after the, the Singapore uh, government shut down all uh, exports from Malaysia. Within a year, the Malaysian pork industry didn't exist and um, I was madly trying to promote that we were visionaries, not just blind luck uh, <laughs> there. But uh, pork exports rose, if you actually, you know, in terms of government and, and frustration, uh, the 1998 election, you, those that were around would remember the uh, Australian pork industry was so on its, on its uh, knees that it ran an anti-government campaign that year. Uh, in 1999, they were looking at boat catalogues uh, a little bit more. Uh, so it really changed the fortune of the industry from pretty simple technology uh, that uh, the Victorian Department of Agriculture really were the, inst uh, uh, not the instigators, we instigated the work with the Singaporeans, but really worked hard. My next phase was moving on to invasive animals, uh, the Cooperative Research Centre for what was called Pest Animal Control. There, the famously uh, colleague uh, Jeff Garrett's on his first day at CSIRO, uh, this CRC announced that it had, um, it had uh, invented a, or developed a, a uh, virus that could destroy the world. Um, and so I think most of your first day, Jeff, was taken up on briefings uh, on, on this. And uh, like me, your wife might have said, is that the job you just accepted, um, running that, that CRC? Anyway, we turned it around um, from a technology-focused CRC to one that was really very into uh, the industry much more and gave the, gave the reins of leadership to the industry. And so it, it's been very, very successful. Uh, it's developed a, um, a pig bait that uh, is out there available for sale. That sounds like it's not a big deal, but believe me, it is to get a poison registered for a large mammal uh, is against all regulatory sort of barriers that you, you think. And it's a really good case of this. The company can supply this stuff, but no way on earth would a company ever develop this stuff um, on its own. 
given the regulatory barriers that are, uh, are out there to protect us all. Um, in, in the last few months, um, uh, half, there's half the number of rabbits on the Air Peninsula uh, that there were a few months ago as a, a new strain of uh, what many people still refer to as Khaleesi virus, rabbit hemorrhagic disease, has come. That's been uh, released uh, through that CRC. Um, uh, those of you that um, watch TV will not have been able to avoid the carpenter uh, and the carp issue. And uh, our esteemed uh, Deputy Prime Minister promoting this, he's put 15 million bucks extra. Actually, I had to force Syro to take this project um, because the individuals involved were still pretty um, damaged by the way the original Khaleesi virus released and they didn't want to do this work and they didn't really have fish facilities at all. Um, but uh, we convinced them to do it and uh, it's looking very, very good to perhaps be the third biological control of a, ma of, a, of a vertebrate ever in the world, the first two being myxomatosis and then Khaleesi virus. Uh, they're the only places on earth that this happens. We had a massive program of involving Australians in, um, in uh, looking out for feral animals for ourselves, uh, for themselves and getting involved in the science and that's been very successful as well. Um, we now, we now relate, uh, uh, ahead of cane toads going into Western Australia at the moment, into the Kimberley, we took the emphasis off trying to kill toads onto trying to save the species that are affected, because not that many animals are affected. Uh, and the uh, University of Sydney has developed cane toad sausages. Uh, so if you give, if you give um, a northern quoll a little bit of food poisoning with a... With a with a uh, little bit of cane toad toxin, it, it will never go near a cane toad again in its life. Unfortunately, dogs and cats still kill them quite often, um, but we're actually doing that in, in Northern Australia uh, at the moment through really good application of science uh, and into policy. Uh, University of Queensland, again, with uh, stumps, Peter Beattie gave us this money, um, where um, we're using uh, the pheromones of uh, cane toad tadpoles to scare into traps other, uh, it's highly specific uh, and you can clear a billabong of uh, cane toad um, tadpoles now. So a really successful CRC, it's now gone on to um, uh, become a, an independent institute in its own right, the Centre for Invasive Species Control. Um, and then for the last seven years, I've run the CRC Association. So there is a thread of commonality in the, in the career. And we've changed uh, there because I, I love talking about CRCs to politicians and, and anyone, basically anyone will bloody listen, actually. And quite a few that want, don't want to listen, uh, <laughs> as it turns out. And I think it's important because uh, I came in at a time of threat um, to the program. It's the largest uh, uh, chunk of money in the... Department of Industry that's unprotected and it's projected out 10 years for new CRCs coming along. So it's often the, the program that the Treasurer grabs down the bottom of the, of, the, uh, of the couch of the Minister's office a week or two before budget and, you know, pulls out 30, 30 million for this or that to fill another hole everywhere. So it's, it's in constant need of being promoted uh, and... and uh, and put in the face of our politicians and, uh, and our public. The um, CRC projects, uh, up to a million dollars a year for up to three years, I think really does address the biggest hole in the CRC program, which was to involve more uh, startups and more uh, SMEs. And I think uh, David Miles, in his review, uh, accepted ATSI's recommendation. Of, this was an ATSI initiated um, Matt, you might have written that. No, you're too young to do that. He'll take the credit, he says, uh, for this. Uh, but it was ATSI's policy uh, that's seen is going to become a really successful uh, part of this program. Um, we're finally on the way up in money. That's good. And um, uh, CRCs are no longer at a disadvantage in uh, university block funding, and that's been a really important thing to us, that industry money coming into a university has been treated as slightly unclean um, and uh, money from other government programs better. So that's important. 
um, the first of the d three defence CRCs is also uh, under uh, in initiation uh, now. And finally, I think we are recognised as uh, leaders in industrial PhDs. Um, one of them being made a fellow today, Bronwyn. Uh, congratulations. Uh, and um, so we've been doing it for a fair while, not that your PhD is that long ago, uh, Bronwyn. And I, 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 I think one of the things I can contribute to ATSI is to uh, help ease in. There's a big, there's a great plethora of new programs on getting uh, people to work with companies and um, academic institutions. And I think it's probably uh, fair to remind people from time to time that for 27 years in Australia we have had a program that's done this uh, very successfully. When I was with Alan uh, Finkel in uh, Berlin earlier this year, the Germans up until the first uh, morning tea of the morning, they led all the discussions and they all praised the CRC program uh, in turn. I was the next speaker and I thought I should just uh, shut up and leave it to the, the Germans to promote the program. But uh, it's a popular program around the world. It's doing well and I think it's, uh, it, it's enjoyed ATSI's support uh, very strongly for quite some time. And anything that I can do to help uh, promote the ATSI agenda in the future would be something I'd love to do. Uh, and I am in Canberra and stalking the halls of uh, Parliament uh, more often than I often wish to do so. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.